logarithmic equation into Wolfram Alpha, it's saying where your two x values are, right? So it's between, this first one is like between negative 2 and negative 2 and a half, and then between negative 3 and a half and negative 4, you, you got a ballpark figure, but if you scroll down, it's going to give you the x values right here. Here are your two x values right here. So you just throw these in your calculator and you get an approximate answer. You get your two values for x. Okay, That will save you probably a good five or six minutes right? if you just throw that in. And just put on your used Wolfram Alpha. Okay. Because this is where you're starting to go, folks. You know, you're going to be start, starting to look at problems that are going to have ridiculous like numbers sometimes. It's not like the little quadratics you solved in 107 and 096 or whatever. So these are like real situations that you're going to be looking at. So this is something you can use. And the other thing is, um, let's take a look really quickly at, well, we can't yet because you haven't figured out how to do the equation of a circle, but I'll show you how I can use GeoGebra for number seven just to get a visual. Same thing, you can get a visual for all three of these by plugging it into GeoGebra or Demos or your graphing calculator. Right? Because it's really nice to have a visual for these three problems. So okay, let's take a look at today's material. And we'll just quickly go through the preview exercises. I'm just going to go right around the room and ask you what you got. And if you pass, you want to say pass, you can say pass. So the first one, we're just um, looking at some horizontal distances between two points. And we're using the Pythagorean theorem to come up with that distance. So I'm just going to label these. This point is negative 3, 2. And this point up here is 2, 5. And what we're trying to find is the distance of the line segment that's connecting those two points. And as of right now, you do not have a formula for that. But we could form a right triangle and drop a leg down here. So this, this would be at what? Negative 3, 5. That point right there would be same x value as this, let's call this A and this C. So it'd have the same x value as A and the same y value as C. And so I suggested you find the horizontal and vertical distances. So what was the horizontal distance along here? How much? 5. Okay. So that's 5. And the vertical distance was 3. And once we find those, we know to find the distance of line segment AC. I guess that's how you could write it. I hadn't thought about that distance. All right, we'll just do that. Distance of line segment AC is going to be what? the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared, right? So that's going to be the square root of what? 25 and 9, 34? Okay, so this is the square root of 34. That's the exact distance. Now if I asked you for an estimate to two places, you would put, throw it in your calculator. Okay, so another way to get that is to look at the difference between your x's to Take away a negative 3 is 5, square it, and 5 take away 2 is 3, and square it. So the Pythagorean theorem helps us to come up with the distance formula. So if you're trying to calculate the distance between any two points, you can use this distance formula right here. Okay. So it's just the square root of... The differences is in the x values squared, x coordinates, plus the differences in the y coordinates squared. And we get that from Pythagorean theorem. All right. So what did you get for number three? Anybody want to let me know for that? Square root of 40. Do I have consensus on that? And what is it uh, rounded to two decimal places? 0. 0.32. OK. All right, draw a circle with the center at 2, negative 3. So I go up 2 to the right and down 3. There's my center. And it has a radius of 5. So how do I get 
say, four points along here that I can easily get. What does it mean to have a radius of five? Five points away. So five points away. So one, two, three, four, five. So out here I'm at seven, negative three, right? And I go up five, one, two, three, four, five. To the left five, one, two, three, four, five. And then down, one, two, three, four, five. So the radius is the distance from the center of your circle to any point on your circle. So that all these distances from the blue center out to those red dots would be five. That's what the radius is. The radius is five. The distance across the entire circle is double that, right? That's called the diameter. And if I could really draw a nice circle here, which I'm not going to be able to do, it would look something like that. Okay. All right. So the question says, find the distance from a point on the circle to the center. Did you have to, did you have to do any work here? What is the distance from a point on the circle to the center here? Five, right? Because it's the radius. It's equal to the radius. So the radius is five. So the point, the distance from any point on this circle, any point to the center is five. But just in case you like you hadn't thought about that and you went out, say, five uh, to this point out here at seven comma negative three, and you know your center is 2, negative 3, and you actually used your distance formula. So you say, okay, what's my distance? It's negative 3, take away a negative 3. Of course, I'm on the same horizontal, so I haven't moved at all in my y distance, squared, plus 7, take away 2, squared, which is the square root of 0 plus 25, which is square root of 25, which is 5. So it works, right? So now if we wanted to find the distance between any point on that circle, it would be the radius, right? This is really the radius. It's the radius, which we know is 5. And it's x take away 2 square plus y take away a negative 3 square. So you can simplify that and call that x minus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 3 squared. Because so when you subtract a negative, you get the positive, And that equals 5. Now what happens if I square both sides here? What happens if I square both sides? What would I get if I square both sides? Right, I, I have all of this right here. I'm, I just squared the left side. The left side's 25. And when I square the right, that goes away, right? Squaring the square root. So I get x minus 2 squared plus y plus 3 squared. And remember, 25 is 5 squared, right? Or your radius squared. So if you look at this formula, you see you're centered at 2 and negative 3. That's how we end up getting the equation for a circle, which we'll see in a second. But I really wanted you to work on these two formulas. I hope you did. Um, what happens when you square A plus B? What do you get, Peter? You have no clue? Yes, you do. Don't tell me that. How about if you did it out the long way? It'd be A, the long way is this, right? A squared plus what? How many of those ABs do you? 2AB, yeah? Plus B squared. Okay, and A minus B, Zach? Okay, well, let's write it out the long way. 
a minus b times a minus b, a square. What's that? You multiply. Negative. Negative a b, and what's that one out there? Negative a b, so how many of those do you have? Um, what kind of two? Negative 1 a b and negative 1 a b? No negative and negative? No, you're adding. How about if I said this, negative 1x and a negative 1x, what would you get? Yeah, so you've got negative 1 of these things called AB and another negative 1 of AB. So how many do you have? Yep, negative 2AB. And then finally we get our B square. Okay, this is... This is um, how you square what we call a binomial. A binomial is two terms, okay? So notice the middle term. It's really important here to look at the middle term for a second. The middle term is always double whatever these two things are multiplied. It always works that way. So if you had x plus 5 quantity square, you would get an x squared, and you would get your 5 squared. The middle term is going to be 5x and 5x. It's twice 5 times x. So if we were going backwards, if I said x squared plus 10x plus 25, and I wanted you to go backwards, what do you do? You say, well, that thing is an x square, and let's suppose it wasn't as clear as this is here. To get that number, remember, you, took, you take half of this, half of 10 is 5, and you square it. So you take half of that middle number, and that's what the binomial is. So sometimes we have an incomplete, like if we had this kind of um, equation, let's say, um, just put a 4 over there, I guess. And I wanted you to, to create a perfect square on the left-hand side. We have the right to add anything to both sides of an equation. So if I wanted you to turn this into x plus something square, we've just done it. It would have to be 25 gets added here because half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25. But whatever you add to one side of your equation, you have to add to the other side. So these two equations, x squared plus 10x equals 4, is exactly the same as x plus 5 quantity squared equals 29. They're exactly the same equation. And if you don't believe it, square this out. Okay, subtract 4 from both sides here, and you get x squared plus 10x minus 4 is 0. Subtract 29 from both sides here. They're exactly the same. So what I just did with this equation is I, this is how you actually, this process of completing the square is what we use to get the quadratic formula, but we never bother showing that to you. So you're going to be getting pieces of, a, of an equation today like this, and you're going to have to turn it into something like this. So understanding that this middle number is always double this product is really important. That's why I threw that into the preview exercise. But we'll have some practice. All right, so let's take a look at this demo. Want to start us off, um, Hannah? Yeah, I, I, typo is the set. There we go. Hazel didn't catch that one. Mm 
Okay. So, you know, this is like a, an ideal. It's, it's like, it's almost impossible, right? I don't know if, is it possible in the real world to have a perfect circle? It's an interesting question. Okay. So today we're going to translate this geometric definition of a circle into an algebraic formula. So if we start with a circle centered at our typical thing, right, HK, we use HK for what? Quadratic formulas, right, for the vertex? Yep, so you've seen HK before. It's going to be a similar idea. And we have a radius of R, and then we, we're going to let XY be any coordinates of any point on the circle. So what do we know based on this formula up here? What can you tell me about the point XY based on our geometric um, distance? Of, yeah, on our geometric distance above. What can you tell me about it? Going other than Jackson, Bella? Okay, what is the other thing called? Center, right. So XY, point XY. Why isn't this writing? Just because everything wants to give me trouble. Okay, so we know that the point XY is our units from the center, H comma K, right. our units from the center. So let's use our little baby distance formula, right? So our distance formula says that if we take X minus H and we square it and we add to it the difference between Y minus K and we square it and we take the square root, of that distance, it's equal to R. That's what our distance formula tells us. So to get the standard form of the equation of any circle, the standard form, we're going to be looking at another form. And you always know there's like two forms for these, at least two forms for different uh, equations. So to get the standard form, we square both sides. And that gives us r squared equals x, any point on the circle, take away its corresponding x value at the center squared, plus any y point on the circle, take away its corresponding y value of the center squared. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So that's the standard form of a circle. So how would we write in standard form the equation of a circle that is centered at the origin? So if it's centered at the origin, that means h is 0 and k is 0. So that's kind of nice, right? So we would write x squared equals x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared. And it has a radius of 1. So where I see r, I put a 1. So 1 square is 1. 1 equals x squared plus y squared. So that would be this, the standard form of a circle that has its center at the origin and has a radius of 1. You will get to know and love this circle very well. It's called a unit circle. one of the forms of the unit circle. We'll be looking at it much differently in, in, on Friday, but, or Monday maybe. Unit circle. So there's a radius of 1, and it's centered at the, at the uh, origin. So let's do a quick sketch. So you just put an x and y axis through, and we're going to look at the domain and range of the unit circle. I'm going to sort of let um, every five of these uh, be point 0.2, just so I, I'm not drawing a little teeny weeny circle here. So here's my center, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's 1, comma, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's 0, comma, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's negative 1, comma, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, negative 1. And I just... Not too bad. All right, so there's my unit circle. So if we were looking at this picture, what would be 
Now, I don't even know if you caught this. You probably didn't because you're so involved in like learning all this new stuff. Look at this. It's not a function, right? We're so used to saying find the domain and range of a function. Remember, if you don't have a function and you just have a set of ordered pairs that don't have follow any special rules, it's just called a relation. So this is not a function because if you drop a vertical line, look at your y-axis. When x is 0, what's its identity? I don't know. 1 or negative 1. So there is not one and only one output for a given x value. So this, th this fails the vertical line test, so this is not a function. That's why it says the relations domain and range. Okay. So let's take a look at the domain. Anybody want to tell me in interval notation, Irene, what the domain is? You can say pass if you don't feel comfortable. Pass, okay. Can I pick on someone else? Pick. Almost. Brackets. Brackets, because 1, 0, and negative 1, 0 is part of the domain, right? All right, and what about the range? Any brave people out there in pre-calculus land? Jackson? Yep, same thing. Domain and range are exactly the same. All right, so... How would you graph something? Now, this is true, and I sh when I wrote this the other day, I should have written GeoGebra. Um, I don't know about Desmos, if you would use the same thing on Desmos. That's I'm not sure. But any sort of graphing software. Because we can't put into our calculator y square, right? We can only put in y, right, for all of our equations, regardless of what kind of graphing calculator you have. Right, if you come here, it says y. So you have to solve this equation for y, and hopefully you see you're going to run into some problems when you do that. But suppose you start to solve this for y, you get 9 minus x squared. That's your first step, you subtract x squared from both sides. Then you square root both sides, remembering you have a plus and minus. Right. So if you put one value for x in, you get two output values. That's why is not a function. So how do you put this in a, either GeoGebra or a graphing calculator? You go like this. y1 is going to be the positive square root of 9 minus x squared. That's going to give you the top half of your circle. It's a semicircle, right? It's the top half. And y2 is the bottom half, the negative square root of 9 minus x squared. Well, that's good. Not everybody has the same intuition you have, but thank you. I'm glad you find it intuitive. All right, so let's try that. Square root of 9 minus x squared. Where's my square here? I can't even see it. Is that it? Yep. Oh, got a star. How'd that happen? X. All right, and let's graph that. Now, we got to be careful. We don't want to, well, we could do the standard window, I suppose. So, we want to graph that. And you notice it goes negative 3 to 3. But you notice how it looks squished? It's because of the way the window is set up. So, if you do a square, if you go into zoom, and you go down to square instead of a rectangle, now it looks like a circle. So there's your top half. And then you do y2. And actually, you don't even have to type it in anymore. You can just go like this, the opposite of y1. Oh, shoot, how do I get y1 in there? I forgot. No, that's my old one. There's a way just to say the opposite of y1. I forgot. It's been a while since I've done that. I don't know. Oh, the opposite? Yeah, that's probably going to work. Vars. Yeah, but by the time you do, yeah, there we go. Opposite of y1. Thank you. And then you get the bottom half of your graph. So that's kind of cool. 
And if you changed your window so it wasn't going from negative 10 to 10, it would be bigger, right? If you said, say, from negative 4 to 4 all the way around, it would look a lot nicer. So that's how you do it with a graphing calculator. It's also how you would do it with GeoGebra. I guess it's time for a new GeoGebra here. I was doing this with my 107 class. We're doing transformations. All right, so you would say y equals, and then square root is sqrt, and then you say 9 minus x square, and there's your top half of your circle. And then you can say y equals the opposite of sqrt. 9 minus x squared. There's the bottom half. Okay. So the reason I'm showing you this is that you may have to draw circles today for one of those three questions that I told you about at the end. And sometimes the circle might intersect, say, a line. So if I put a line in here now, I'll, I'll wait and get there in a minute. So that's how you would use GeoGebra. I'm not as adept with Desmos by any point because I kind of, you can? Oh, that's nice. So that's why I said question mark for Desmos. So Desmos, uh, Nick says you can do it. So let's just take a quick look at that. She minds will start becoming familiar with how technology can help you here because you'll be using it quite a bit in your professions as you go along here as students and then whatever your profession is after you leave. So we want, we don't want the calculator, right? We want the software, right? I'm just going to do Desmos. I should probably download it. Is it the calculator? Yeah, okay. So uh, can you do y square? So what would you put here? y square? Oh, okay, so hit this, y squared equals 9 minus x squared. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. And then does it do intersections as well, like where it intersects? Different? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is one of my things I'm going to learn more over the summer how to use. So I think it has some advantages. So with, with the uh, application problems you have today, they're going to be saying things like, um, let's suppose you had, this is a circle of radius 3, and you're at some place up here, 6 miles north of your pizza shop or whatever you're looking at, your radio tower, or an ant, and this is batter that the ant can't go through because it won't be able to breathe. And then you're at a point up there, and you're at a point out here, say, and right there. And you're going to connect those two points, and you want to know different things about it. So when you connect two points, you're going to get the equation of a line, which you solve for y. The equation of a circle has x and y, so you do a substitution right, to get one equation with one variable. So you, there's a lot of work involved in these. That's why I've been trying to get you to read your book. You'll start reading it, I'm sure, very soon. Okay, so that's uh, thinking ahead a little bit. Now, what are we going to do if we have a circle that isn't centered at the origin? That's okay. We still say, we still write down our equation. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. We know that our radius is 3, so we get 3 squared over here, which is 9. X take away 4 squared plus Y take away a negative 1 squared. And then we can write that, just simplify it to be Y plus 1. Most of you will probably skip this step right here. I just do it to show you where the plus one came from. So that would be the circle, that would be the equation of a circle centered at four negative one with a radius of three. Any questions on that?
All right. So let's expand. So you know when we have equations like that, we can expand them into polynomial form. So let's take the general, let's expand the standard form, and now we're going to create what's called the general form. Now remember, think back to lines for a minute. You have this equation for a line. You have this equation for a line. One's called slope-intercept, one's called point-slope. And you have this equation for a line. This is your general form right here. That's really used a lot. Um, if, you, if you have it in this form, you can quickly get the line by using your two intercepts. It's a real quick way of graphing it. And most students come out knowing this very well, this somewhat well, and a little weak there. This is what we call the general form. And remember when we did quadratic functions, we had the vertex form, and then we had the polynomial form. A similar thing here. So if we take our general, our standard form, which is r squared equals x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, and we want to expand it, all that means is we want to square both of these things. So let's expand it. And it is real, literally an expansion because it makes it a lot longer, right? So it's r squared equals, and that's why I had you practice this in your preview exercises, x squared minus 2xh plus h squared plus y squared minus 2ky plus k squared. So that's the general form. Now remember, h and k are just constants here. So once you know the value of h, this becomes some number times x. This becomes a constant. k, some number times y, and then another constant. Just looks a little scary in this form. So this form of an equation gives us a quadratic equation in two variables. Such equations describe circles only when the coefficients of x squared and y squared is 1. So if you're looking at a general form and you have something in front of x squared and y squared, if you have a quadratic equation with two variables and you have something other than coefficients of 1, it's not a circle. Yes. yes. We're going to be looking at these, like, depending on if we have any more snow days. Like, now we're down to, like, the second to the last class. But circles always have a coefficient of 1. All right. It's called conic sections. When we convert from the general form, notice I have a little typo here. This should be y squared. Right. So we can convert from this general form Back to this form. Notice what we did here. We have two perfect squares in this form. So in order to go from one form to the other, we need to use a technique called completing the square. So the first thing you do is you take this quadratic equation in two variables, and you move the constant over to the right side. So the first thing I'm going to do is write x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y equals 23. Then I'm going to put all of my x terms beside each other and all of my y terms beside each other. And now I basically want to kind of pair these up with the goal of having x squared plus 4x become something like x plus something squared. 
and with the goal of y squared minus 6y becoming something like y minus some number square, because that's what the standard form looks like, equals my radius square. So I'm going to complete this, the language is complete the square on my x terms first, on x. So you say, okay, if I was squaring something, this middle term is double my second term, right? This is twice whatever that second number is in my parentheses. So to get that number, I half this. So half of 4 is 2, and then I square it. I get 4. So I'm going to add 4 here. I'm going to put that in a different color. Come on, work for me today, please. No, it's not working for me today. So notice I have an equation, and I just added 4 to the left side. So I must add 4 to the right side to keep this in balance and keep it equivalent. So now, if I factor that, x squared plus 4x plus 4, I get x plus 2 times x plus 2. Voila, x plus 2 squared. So I've completed the square on x. Now, I don't know if any of you, when you worked in initially with like um, using factoring, and when I used to teach 096, I used to always use these squares. And this will just help you to see what we're doing visually. And this square is x by x. So its area is x squared. Then we would, have, we would have little rectangles, different colors, that you could put alongside of it. And these rectangles had the dimensions of 1 by x, 1 by x. So each one of the areas for each of these is 1x. So what do I have right now? I have a square and I have four rectangles laid out. And I want to make it another, into another square. So remember, this is 1 by x and this is 1 by x. So you got x and x. So here's your x squared plus 4x. But if you trace this, it's certainly not a square. So to complete it, you'd have to put four little baby unit squares in here, one by ones, to complete the square. There's your plus four. So what are the dimensions? The dimensions is the length of this side, which is x plus two. And the length of that side is x plus two. So that's a visual for completing a square. I know some of you like visuals. Some of you don't care, but that's all right. All right. So y squared minus 6y, what do we have to do to complete this square? Take half of negative 6, you get negative 3, you square it, plus 9. So over here, you would have a plus 9. If you add 9 to the left side, you've got to add 9 to the right side. Now you've got to factor that. y squared minus 6y plus 9, factors of 9 that add up to 6, negative, negative 6, negative 3, and negative 3. So you put your 3 in here. And then you add up all these gorgeous little numbers over here. And oh, it's so nice. This one comes out to be 36. So what's the center of this circle? Remember, x plus 2 is equal to x minus h. So for negative 2. So it's negative 2, comma, 3, and the radius is 6. So that would be that original quadratic equation with two variables was an equation with a center at negative 2, 3, and a radius of 6. So just because I always feel somewhere in my heart a little sympathy for questions that may be a little different than what you've seen, but you're all capable of doing these. 
I just want to show you how maybe you could get started, say, with something like this, now that we know uh, our equation. So a small radio transmitter broadcasts and a 53-mile radius. So it's always easier to imagine that this radio transmitter is right at the center of a circle. And it's got a broadcast radius of 53 miles. Right, 53 miles in each direction. So the first thing I would do I would definitely draw this picture on my paper, but if I'm home, I'm going to throw it right into uh, some form. Hey, let's use Desmos. No, I don't know how to do all that stuff I'm going to show you on Desmos, so we'll just. So what would that equation be for that? It's at the center, right? x squared plus y squared equals r is 53, okay? So I have to figure out what 53 square is, right? So to write the top half, it's y equals the square root of 53 squared minus x squared. And it's probably not going to show up because of my scale. So I've got to squish these down a little bit so I can see it. Here's my top half of my circle. Right? And I know that that point right there is 53, 0, negative 53, 0, 0, 53. All right, now I've got to put the bottom half in. I wonder if I can just do that. No, I'll just do it. Square root. It's probably a quicker way. Uh, two. See how big the numbers are getting? Two eight zero nine. When you're squaring stuff. All right. So there's there's a, a picture of the circle. All right. So this is the broadcasting range of this radio tower. All right, so let's take a little picture of this. Oh, is that the picture? No, that's recording. Okay. So that's what I would have on my paper. And now it says that you drive along a straight line from a city 70 miles north of the transmitter to another city that's 74 miles east of the transmitter. So if you have your diagram here, you're at some city up here. How many miles north? 70? Right, so I just squish this down a little bit. So I'm up here at 70. Right. That point is 0, 70. And I'm at another, and I'm driving to a city that's 74 miles east of this radio tower, right? 74, 2, 4 is right here. And basically, you connect those two points with a line. Let me see, line. Oh, let's see. Give me a segment there to there. Oh, come on. Give me a segment. Oh, there it is. Eh, stop. I haven't done a lot of, of this kind of geometry with GeoGebra. But here's the point. If you just connect those two lines, all right, if you connect these two points with a line, I'm going to do it. Uh, anybody have a straight ruler? ruler or a... Oh, here, I'll just do this. We'll pretend. I was going to say, if you have your studio bookmarks, I always use those. So if you connect those two points, all right, you connect those two points, now you have the equation for this circle. You know what that is. x squared plus y squared is 53 squared. You can, I hope, by now, find the equation of a line that goes to those two points. And what you want to know is these two points right here is where it intersects. So you find those x values. 
and then the distance right here of, between those two points is going to be your radio broadcasting area. So you, you're out of broadcasting range until that point. You can't get any kind of transmission, and you're out of it after that point. But you have these two x values. Once you find an x value, you plug it into the equation of the line, get your y values, and then you find the distance between those two points using your distance formula. Lots of steps. But now we're in pre-calc, and we have multi, multi-step problems. All right. So this is what the this is the problem you should start on with your lesson activity. So work with the other problems for like 10 minutes and then see how far you can get with this one before you leave, okay? Mute off. Uh-oh.